Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in the series where I try to start my own tech company. Last week, I covered some interactivity in the Phaser JS game that I'm building. And this week, I was really focused on how I pass data from the Next.js portion of my application, which is handling user authentication, sign up, registration, and signing up for like a, a Stripe subscription, and then passing that user data into my Phaser JS game. So Next.js is handling like who can access the game, and then I have the game that needs to get built itself. And recently I've been focusing primarily on the game, but this week we need to sort of connect them together. So. If you want to take a look at my screen, this is what I've got so far for this week. You can see that in the top left corner, there's now three hearts appearing, and that corresponds to the user's level on the user object. Let's take a look at what that code looks like. Okay, so here in my game page, I'm using the use user hook straight from the Superbase library to get my user object on line 13. Then I've passed that user object as a dependency to my use effect that was loading my phaser.js script, which will then attach to the DOM element here on line 81 with an ID of game content. Previously, this use effect had an empty dependency array, which means it's only gonna run once when the page loads. Now that I'm adding a single dependency here, this use effect is gonna fire multiple times. So the first thing that I needed to do was to create a new uh, if condition that will break out of the init phaser function if the user object is not present. Instead of allowing phaser to automatically start itself, I'm calling it directly here on line 69. I'm accessing the scene.start method on the phaser game object. So the phaser game object is returned from creating a new phaser.game instance on line 33. And then we're accessing the scene objects on that object and calling the start function. We're passing in a key, which will correlate to the scene key that we want to start. And then we can pass in our data. And I had to do this in order to pass in that data. Otherwise, the phaser game will automatically start the first scene in this scene array here, which would still be our preloader scene, but we want to pass that user object in. You can see here, I'm also passing a new scene in called game UI. We'll touch on that in a little bit. But in our preloader scene, let's follow this data as it goes through. So we're passing in a user object attached to a key of user inside of an object. So let's jump over to our preloader scene. So we can access that data inside of our create method. And this week's uh, goal was two, it was in two parts. First, I wanted to make sure that the two parts of my application, the Next.js app, which was handling user auth, and the phaser game, which is the interactivity of the app itself, it's a game, uh, could communicate. So we wanted to be able to pass that user object in. But once we did pass that user object in, the point of passing that user object was to be able to communicate with Superbase inside of our phaser game instance. So I wanted to be able to call uh, functions that would reach out and update Superbase, whether that's incrementing a user level, or maybe they've uh, gotten a new item from a chest and we wanna add it to a JSON object that exists on a database in Superbase. But in order to do so, we needed to pass in the user reference to be able to make those calls. So here on line 25 and 26, I understand I could pass in the user's experience and level directly from the game page, but I chose to pass in the user object directly so that I could make those calls in Superbase and just make sure that they work. So that's what I did and we're being returned the user experience and the user level. Then on line 30, we're calling a this.scene.start function and passing in the test scene key, which is the main scene of my game so far. It's just a test. And then we're passing in the experience and the level directly. So here on line 36, this code, probably not necessary anymore now that we're calling this.scene.start and we're passing in that data. So jumping over to our test scene, I've had to add a, a new function at the top of our scene called init, and it's gonna take in our data. And our data, I believe, would be ac uh, accessible inside of our create method, but if we want our data to be accessible outside of our create method, 
such as, uh, or for example, I should say, in any other functions that we might have after this preload method, then we're gonna wanna attach that data to an object that exists on the scene itself. So we're using this init function, which takes in uh, data with a type of any, and it's just gonna assign that data to an init data object, which is also created on the scene itself. So this init data has is expecting a, a level, which is a number, and then inside of our create function, we're pulling that level constant, that variable, outside of our, or from our init data object, which exists on the scene. So that's here on line 55, we're console logging. This is the hero level that's inside of our test scene. And then in order to do something with that data, we needed to create a new scene, which is our game UI. So I'm passing the level, and as we talked about earlier, we saw those hearts appear. The game UI is going to create those hearts on the screen, and I wanna do base the number of hearts that we're creating in game off of the user's level. So we're passing in the level there on line 58, and we can jump over to our game UI. That's another scene, um, just sort of regular scene class. It's also gonna have a very similar init data pattern that we just saw in the test scene. We're creating a new group of class phaser game objects images, and we're assigning that to a constant named hearts. Then we're calling a function on that phaser game objects group called create multiple that takes an object which accepts a key. That key will correspond to an image key that we instantiated in our preloader scene. So in our preloader scene, um, here on line 18, I'm loading an image UI heart full. You can also see I'm lo uh, loading on 17 heart empty. We'll probably use that next week. So here back in our game UI, we're creating multiple heart images and then we're setting the X and Y position of each. And they're basically gonna start at 10 pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the left, or on the X and Y axis, I should say. And then the step X here on line 23 will correlate to the distance between each image. And then quantity here on line 25, you can see I'm passing in level, which should be a number, and it should be three for the current user. And that um, tells this function the number of images that we should create. So now that we've taken data in from our Next.js instance, we're absorbing that data in phaser and accounting for it, and then creating UI based off of that data. You can see those hearts are here on the screen. And uh, so far, this has been a pretty successful week. I think my next goal here is to add an enemy or maybe like a spiky bush or something that can damage the character and to add this interaction of the hero taking damage and losing one heart uh, from our UI. So thanks for watching. As always, it's been a journey of just trying to figure out how to make this work. And uh, I appreciate you following along. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.